did Seiko fix their previous mistake? What's up guys? Falling Titan here and today this is it. We got one. A watch that created a lot of controversy and heated debate among watch enthusiasts the SSC 813 because it looked like a Rolex Daytona homage. And there's no doubt there is a similarity, but I don't think Seiko liked being compared to Rolex. That's why we got an emergency refresh pivot. Introducing the all new SSC 911 and what a fitting number. 911 emergency because maybe Seiko saw this as an emergency. We got to fix our watch. We got to inject it with some Seiko DNA. And a lot of my friends are Seiko fans, more so than me. And I got some DMs when this came out. You know what? They're happy. Although it's a step in the right direction, they're not 100% satisfied. But right off the bat, the biggest change and my favorite update is that bezel. We got a gorgeous, high quality, scratch resistant, anodized aluminum with that granular texture tachometer bezel. So that's a huge nod to the original speed timer. The case design is basically the same as the older version with a high polish side slab sides with brushing on top of the lugs. Even the taper on the lugs downwards to the faceted tips, both exact same. So all they did was just enlarge it a bit. I'll be the first to say it. I love the changes, even though I prefer smaller watches. I don't mind this bigger one doesn't wear that much larger. Now, speaking of bigger, let's do the measurements. I got 41.4 millimeters in diameter secret measurement. The Sapphire crystal 32 millimeters. The old one was 31, 13 millimeters thick. We got no drilled lugs and a lug to lug of 45.9. Now the bracelet is nothing special, just like the old one. However, there's a new annoyance. It's 21 millimeters now instead of 20. So it's going to be a tad more difficult to find straps tapering down to 18, just like the old one. We got solid and links, solid links. I would say it looks like a rounded out oyster or a less aggressive presidential style bracelet. It's a two piece with, I believe, pins and collars, fully milled clasp, twin button release, signed Seiko. And yes, a lot of people mentioned that the end link looks like it belongs on another watch. I believe that was on purpose for style points. Um, yeah, if it was square, I don't know, because the case is almost like a 62 MAS. It's a little bit more difficult to pair up the end links. Now the dial, they don't have a white dial version yet of this new one, but they got this gorgeous sunray silver. It's got a beautiful shimmer. It looks much better than the Panda 813, which has more of a eggshell matte dull look. I'm in favor of this new whitish silver. And I love the splash of red. The red sweep and 60 minute sub dial is another nod to the original, but it just gives this watch a little bit of X factor that the old one did not have. And speaking of the 60 minute sub dial at the six o'clock, the new one is larger. So legibility is going to be improved. The date disc is still at an awkward position, hugging the four o'clock indice. I think they should have put it in the middle or just got rid of it. It looks a little bit weird. This one is black and on the old version, it was white. They both have the exact same movement, the V192 plus minus 15 seconds a month with a useless 24 hour sub dial at three o'clock. Huge, huge negative. And they both have the running seconds sub dial at nine o'clock. Now this new one does have a chapter ring instead of a rehot that goes straight down like the older one. Let me know which one you prefer down below. And now let's check out the loom. Another big difference. The old one had pathetic loom only at the cardinal indices, tiny blobs. This one, all the applied indices fully loomed, but the old one has an advantage. The sweep arm is loomed. This one has no loom on that red sweeping seconds. It's not a big deal because, well, the loom on the old one was so tiny, it was barely noticeable. The water resistance remains the same coming in at 100 meters. Thanks to that 6.5 millimeter push pull crown, same diameter as the old one. I believe this one is a little bit thicker and protrudes out from the case. Just a hair. I couldn't get a measurement though. Pushers are bigger here. 4.8 millimeters. The old one 4.3. So you're going to get easier actuation. 
It's still a mushy field because it's a quartz solar chronograph, non-mechanical, not even a mecha quartz. So don't expect that crispy actuation. Now the hands are much improved, completely high polished. They got a dividing line in the middle, slight taper downwards to give it a little bit of dimension. They're beautiful and the loom to hand ratio is perfect. Legibility is much better here. If we look at the old one, the mini hand was a little bit too thin. Plus the hour hand had that weird taper inwards. This one is much more balanced. Big fan of the updated handset. It reminds me more of the original speed timer. Now the price. It got bigger, but the price also got bigger. 700 USD retail. And we get to check both these out thanks to Kavar Jewelers. If you're interested in buying, email me and we'll discuss it. Now guys, if you're still here and you enjoyed this video, please remember to like the video and maybe check out some more chronographs on the right of your screen right now. And I'll see you in the next one.